Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Welcome, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for another chance to tune in right here on the Keenan Lake Show Live with On Demand. How are you, Keenan, today? How are you? Coach, I am doing, I'm doing wonderful. You know, we started a little later today for a special edition tonight, but uh, I had a wonderful day, relaxing day, and so I'm good to go. How about yourself, Coach? Hey, I'm doing good. My shoulder's a little stiff, but we're working it out even now. You know what I'm saying, man? We got a great topic on today, women's rights and sterilization. Normally you want to get right into it, but, man, let's go on ahead and get our holiday shout-outs, man to the different family and friends, man, that we have on the roster, bruh. <laughs> well, you know, Coach, I'm, as always, I would love to say happy holidays to everybody who follows and listens to the Keenan Lake Show, um, to all the families who have been supporting of the, the My Daddy Taught Me That movement. So to the, the John Teeter family with Pepsi-Cola, um, to uh, the Ken Brown family who, who donated a little proceeds to the, to the foundation. To uh, Arsenal Shoe Store in the Asheville Mall, um, I can go on and on. To Ralph Roberts, who has been an extra uh, uh, resource and has done a lot for the movement and the program, Coach. Mm-hmm. Also, Coach, to uh, SIB and Radio for the wonderful year that we've had on the air with SIB and Radio, the growth, and also to also you know the movement and, and helping out with the movement of My Daddy Taught Me That. We, we've been really good about that. It's been truly a movement, Kenan, and congratulations to you um, as well as all your boys that are in the program. For those of you that may be listening, Kenan Lake uh, not only has written a book, my daddy taught me that, but he has a men's and or should be boys to men's program uh, there on the website and there locally in Asheville, North Carolina. And so hats off to all the boys and their families for cooperating as best they can, as they would say in the South. Uh, to to learn how to transform uh, from a young boy to a young man, man. Kudos to you, man. Happy holidays to all of you that are listening. Don't forget now to follow Keenan Lake on Twitter as well as on Facebook. Give them that information before we get started, Keenan. Yes, sir. Uh, and before I, before I do that, Coach, I forgot one entity. Uh, you know, that's... that's um that's the Buncombe County Department of Human and Health Services. That's my, my place of employment. They have been so helpful, so lenient in, in, in helping me develop and grow, not only as a person, but also being being supportive of what I'm doing as well. So I have to give them a shout-out as well. But yeah. the Facebook, I have three Facebooks. I have a personal Facebook, which is Keenan Lake. Mm-hmm. I also have the My Daddy Taught Me That Facebook page. Also, the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio Facebook page. I can be followed on Twitter at the KL Show, and I have an Instagram page which is um, Keenan Lake, and it's uh, North Carolina. So follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, three face uh, three Facebook pages, and also on Twitter. Also, the website is mydaddytaughtmethat dot com. Last but not up. least, Coach, I almost I almost forgot. I cannot leave out Mister and Mrs. Uh, Proctor. They have been a really, real big support. Thank you guys very much. So I'm ready to get started, Coach. If I missed anybody, it's not on purpose. I'm very sorry. Thank you to all the listeners. Ready to get it started, Coach. Yeah, this is the Kim and Lake Show live on SIBN Radio Special Edition. It's not just the holiday edition. It's the edition for you to celebrate who you are, who you are becoming, and for parents and children to cooperate together to become better communities all over the world. Kenan Lake graces us today with a topic. Kenan, tell them what you're talking about on today well coach you know i want to get into this uh sterilization um topic here today and and what i want to talk about first coach we're gonna it's gonna be kind of a two-part show but uh, i want to start off with uh talking about how in this country over the years and over a few decades now there have been women who have been sterilized um without even knowing Mm -hmm. so 
um, you know, sterilization and being sterilized, you know, it was banned in this country in 1979. But what we have, Coach, we have, uh, in some of the research that I've done, I love to read um, and let, let the listeners know where this topic came from. I was watching a video about four or five months ago, and it was specifically talking about Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Well, we know that Planned Parenthood is one of the biggest, you know, entities when it comes to uh, abortions and, 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 and uh, sterilizations and that type of thing. But what they were talking about when I was looking at this, this video was saying that Planned Parenthood was, could have possibly been involved with uh, the sterilization of women without them being uh, knowledgeable and, uh, or informed about it. Mm-hmm. So it made me think about this as a, in a little more and dive into this topic a little bit more. And what I found, Coach, was that, um, first of all, Golden State, out in California, um, it, le- it leaves the country with, uh, tw- with 20,000 uh, sterilizations of women who don't know. And this has been going on now. Of course, in 1979, this was supposedly banned in our country. But what I read was that in California, um, primarily in the female prison system out there, um, as late as 2006 to 2010, 150 females were sterilized in the um, in that penal system, in that prison system in California without them being knowledge. Now, the thing about this, Coach, what makes this so bad or so sad is that, of course, these women are being sterilized without their knowledge, so that means they don't they don't know about it. So what, that, what happens is this. You may have a female who may be either underage or pregnant, um, you know, so a female who may be trying to have an abortion, and when they go into these clinics when this stuff happens, um, they are sterilizing these women. Like, for example, we'll talk about in a minute a, a lady who was raped at the age of 13. The doctors waited for her to have her child, and as soon as she gave birth, um, they sterilized her. She, unbeknownst to her, and I'll talk about this, I don't want to tell the story twice. But anyway, so, Coach, you know, what do you think about that? What do you think about these women being sterilized without their knowledge, without them being informed of it, and also with supposedly the government having this type of thing set up? Well, you know, it's legal in California, so let's just get that out there. Uh, how is it uh, uh, legal, sterilized legally in California, uh, prisons, that is. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. First of all, we know it's an infringement upon women's rights. We know it's an infringement on, on women's rights because we know that anything that is done without your knowledge or without your choosing for that to be done, that it is a violation uh, but then again, in California, where things are very much so progressive, uh, we find that this law has been passed. And as I was sharing with somebody uh, last week, too many often, too many times, more often than not, people don't show up when a law is being uh, lobbied for. Uh, and a lot of African American communities are not are not familiar with that. They don't they don't never show up. And so this law, I don't know if it was passed under the the uh, watchful eye of just Caucasians and so forth and so on. You know, I could go there, but I won't. Uh, But, you know, when you don't show up, when you don't watch the news, when you don't read the paper, when you don't listen to what's going on with politicians that are elected and reelected and so forth and so on, a law like this can slip through. I'm not saying that this one did, but it seems to me that there should have been an outcry for women to be sterilized, particularly without their knowledge. That I don't know, but I'm saying that on the basis of women's rights, this is not a good thing, and it sends volumes to the the Willie Lynch letters. It sends volumes to 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 that effect. But Keenan, it's just this. Like I say, every show you always pull one out of the hat, and it's not a magic trick, unfortunately. <laughs> well, Coach, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up. You know, I'm glad you did bring up race, Coach, and it's not a race thing, folks. Anybody who knows the. Uh, about the Keenan Lake Show knows that we just don't talk about African Americans, Caucasians, uh, or any other race for that matter. We talk about humanity and people of all color. But, Coach, I'm glad you brought up the, the race thing because what it appears is that with this sterilization thing, the only people who were being targeted were brown and black people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and a lot of people, and when I was reading, a lot of people stated that it was a cry to, you know, to further eradicate that, you know, the race and this, that, and the third. So, you know, I wanted to make sure I got that out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I think you're right, Coach. I think that, you know, it is an infringement on, on women's rights, primarily if you have no idea, you know. And this is something that, you know, I, uh, as far as the state of California, uh, uh, and this is something that I've heard has been going on during this time across the entire country. Mm-hmm. You know, can you imagine, Coach, being a woman and you go into the doctor's office, you know, for an abortion, and then, you know, you're a 16, 17-year-old woman when this happens. Well, 
you know, you're 25 years old now. You, you're trying to get your life on track, and you want to have children and find out later on down the road that you can't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's a sad um, situation, as you said. It's very sad. Yeah, this, uh, before we go to break, Coach, let me tell you about Elaine Riddick. Okay, Elaine Riddick is a lady from North Carolina. Um, in 1967, she was a 13-year-old uh, girl. She was raped. Mm-hmm. She ended up having the child, and after she had the child, she was uh, sterilized by her doctors. Now, according to the, the hometown that she was, they said that her medical records had been purged and kind of done away with or, or hidden and all this kind of stuff. But to make a long story short, at the age of 19, she got married. And she wanted to have children and found out that she could not have children anymore. And then she learned that she had been sterilized. Mm. So, I mean, Coach, and it said here in this article that I read, it said in the state of North Carolina, over 8,000 women uh, had been sterilized. And just in this in this state, uh, without their um, knowledge or without them being informed, and this was done by their doctors. And according to this article, it said that uh, the state had the state was fully aware of what was going on. You know, what's really funny is that we don't pay attention. You did a show a while back on who's raising our children. And now, you know, the question could be asked, well, uh, who's looking out for the parents of those children? And I'm not so sure that all of us as parents are looking out for ourselves appropriately. We're making sure we party, though. We're making sure we, we get the booty calls. I'm sorry I had to go there, but we're making sure we got that done. We making sure we got rims and a nice car, you know, in, in a lot of cases, and we're making sure that we're getting some money from somewhere. But we're not paying attention to the environmental, political, economical aspects of what's going on around us to the degree that is, you know, people are capitalizing off of our demise. And then when you bring something like this to the table, when you don't know something like this, um, it makes it kind of hard. I don't know if the statutes of limitations are passed or the person can go back and sue. I don't know what the litigation factors are from state to state, region to region. So you have a lot of, uh, you know, ailing factors going forward once you find out something like this has happened to you. And it just begs to, it begs to ask the question, what have we come to when we as brown folks, I don't even want to say African Americans because I would be surprised if it ha- happens to Hispanics, but what what do we do as brown folks to make sure that we our voice is not only heard but counted. And uh, maybe after the break, uh, you know, you, I hope that you don't just start this fire because Keenan Lake, y'all have a, have an issue of starting a great bonfire about an issue that's burning us up in culture. And I'm hoping that he'll, you know, he'll, he'll soothe us somehow uh, with some solution that he found out or somebody who, who stood up and took a stand <laughs> because this is a hot one again, once again. You know what I'm saying? And we want to hear from, listen, before we go to break, we want to hear from you. Uh, we've got a new uh, switchboard. We, we just keep trying the different numbers until we get it right. But one eight 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 five four four one two five four extension 85 uh, I want to say wait about 15 more minutes before you start calling in to get our host a chance to get the things that are on the ta- on his tablet, on, uh, off his tablet, off his mind, uh, into the airwaves, man. But, Kenan, I don't know, man. This is this is another hot-button topic, sound like, man. You know? Well, Coach, when we come back, when we come back for break, Coach, you're going to see if we can get a little hotter because uh, oh I-, I, I talked about the sterilization of women and, and, and to lead up. So what the new thing is now going around and what people are saying now. So when we come back from break, Coach, we'll, we'll talk about that. You're listening to the Kenan Lake Show right here live and on demand on SIBN Radio. Stand by. We'll be right back after. We trust that you are enjoying the show. Stay right there. We'll be right back after these messages. Responsible. Accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake is Keenan Lake, the author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake 
at mydaddytaughtmethat.com or call 828-582-2261. That's 828-582-2261. MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. This is SIBN Radio, and you have just tuned in to the Keenan Lake Show. I'm your host, Keenan Lake. I am a published author, book, My Daddy Taught Me That, a public speaker, and the president of a men's development youth program. Responsible. Accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book, all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake, is Keenan Lake. The author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina, and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. Or call 828-582-2261. That's 828-582-2261. My Daddy Taught Me That dot com. Yeah, we're back here. Sorry about that. We got some interns, some new folks, man. We're keeping it locked, keeping it right here. Women's rights and sterilization is the topic on today on the Keenan Lake Show Live and on the Man on SIBN Radio. Keenan, you say it's going to get hotter than what it is right now? Well, Coach, you know, um, <clears throat> the reason that I wanted to talk about the whole sterilization thing is, first of all, to I don't think I don't think a lot of people even knew or even knows about how, you know, that has taken place. You know, women being sterilized without their knowledge. This is something, again, that has supposedly has taken place and, and has happened as recent as 2010. Even though it was banned in uh, 1979, it's something that still has happened in, uh, as, you know, as late as, two, uh, as early as 2010 uh, for us. Uh, so... This is something that could possibly still be going on, you know, in this country. I will say that it's something that is definitely going on around the world, um, you know, for, for a lot of reasons. Population control, people trying to control populations. You know, could it be for racial, racial uh, purposes? Probably so, maybe so. But, you know, I wanted to bring aware, awareness to that. But, Coach, uh, one of the new things that's going on, and this is something because of my field, um, and folks, if you don't know me by now, I am a, a CPS, Child Protective Service Social Worker, uh, working for uh, Buckham County Human Health Services here in National North Carolina. So I've been dealing with neglected and abused kids for about 11 years in my career. Uh, one of the things that they've been talking about as of late, Coach, is not only women, but men being sterilized who are not taking care of their children. Mm. So before I get into that, Coach, what do you think about that? Say that one more time. Okay, so men and women being sterilized who are not taking care of their children, meaning that you're neglecting your children, you're uh, you know you're not supporting your children. And before you talk about that, coach, let me give let me give a little example of what I'm talking about. Now, uh, of course, the couple of cases that I'm a, I'm gonna mention are kind of rare cases. This doesn't happen all the time. But let's just say you're a man with you know 15 plus kids, mm -hmm. and that you know, and I know and I know several. Of those situations here in, in in my in my city, I know a couple of men who have about 15, 19, 20 kids. You know, twenty three kids, something Are like that. Wait, 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 I wait, know. wait, wait, wait. Are you serious? Oh yeah, uh, I know. Uh, yeah, in fact, yeah, I know about two to three men in Asheville, North Carolina, who have you know a lot of kids. Um, you know, there was a, actually uh, a man. He was actually on. Uh, he was on uh, one of the shows, and he had he was actually bragging about having twenty three kids. Now, this man that I'm speaking about specifically is not from here, mm -hmm. but he was uh, talking about having 23 kids. And so, you know, Coach, when you hear this, you know, and oh I've talked to goodness. several people, you know, in each community, uh, you know, each town, you know, you have people like that. You know, yeah, I know a guy who has about 14 kids. I know a guy, you know, so you hear that, and it's, and it's not as rare, as sad as it is, it's not as, it's not as rare as, you know, people may think. But, you know, it's not like every man has that many kids, not to say the least. But anyway... When you talk about stuff like that, Coach, there's no way that one man can support and take care of that many children. Mm. Um, I know, you know, from my job and from where I work, I know, you know, a handful of women who have five and six kids. You know, not one of the kids are in their care or, in, you know, they're, they're not taking care of these kids in any kind of way. 
So the talk is this, like when you have situations like that, or you have, you know, parents who are just neglectful, you know, they may have two and three kids, you know, they may only have two and three kids, but these parents have not taken care of these kids, they've been neglectful and abusive to these kids, and instead of having a revolving door syndrome where, you know, a department of social services will take custody of these kids, but the mom and dad are left to go back out and, and uh, you know, procreate again and have more kids, the, the thing is now, if that's the case, what, is, what about sterilization? The question is being answered. So, so what do you think about that, Coach? I mean, I'm just, you know, like I say all the time, it's just amazing how you, you, you have your finger right there on the pulse. But, you know, I mean, I, I begin to wonder after a while, are we bringing, by all means, we are bringing these things upon ourselves. And I'm talking as a whole, as a people, as a citizens, a citizen pool of people, not any particular color. But I'm just saying our culture is so loose, promiscuous, and on and on and on it goes that I just think that we're bringing this on ourselves. And, you know, there's a proverb that says, he that loves poverty, he that loves pleasure shall be brought to poverty. And when you turn around and you're ready to straighten your life out and really walk the narrow path, as the old folks used to say, then you're, you're going to be looking for your privileges that you once had, that you abused, you know, in your younger life, and some folks even in their, you know, middle age life, and it won't be there. So I, I don't know what to feel about that because, you know, first of all, we would say, no, uh, that is not the way to go. Uh, historically, you know, it's always no, you know, we don't, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't push for sterilization, uh, the control of population, and a whole lot more, the control of races, the races, the, the control of classism, classism, it could be thrown into this debate. Uh, but it's just, I, you know, I can't help but to take some kind of uh, responsibility, sort of like Moses or something. A lot of this is on our shoulders, and we're bringing these things on ourselves. Ken and I, what else can I say, <laughs> you know? I mean, Coach, I think you're absolutely right. And I think the, the, the old, like you said, the old answer or the answer, you know, several years ago to be like, of course not, you know. Mm -hmm. Why would you, anybody push for sterilization? Why would anybody even have that run to their mind? But when you think about it from the standpoint, Coach, of this, like, you know, and, and, and me, myself, when I think about it like this, I'm only speaking for myself, is that, you know, if you have parents or a parent, male or female, who can go out and have child after child after child, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and or even even for this matter, let's just you know it doesn't matter if you have two children or three children or ten children, mm -hmm. but you're not parenting, you're not being a parent to these children, you're not taking care of these children in any kind of way, and you know you, you've never raised you know be it let's just say DSS or DHHS or whatever you want to call it is not even involved, mm -hmm. but you're a parent who your 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 parents have raised you know three of your children, you know you you've had three kids, but your mom or your dad has raised all your children. You've never been a, a parent to your kids. I just it's like that. That's a problem. Kenan, you know, that's why we did the Kenan Lake show. I mean, for you guys that are listening out there, listen, we, we, we ask for your support, but we don't beg for it only for the simple reason that we're going to do this show with or without our listening audience, because these issues are so pertinent we, we, we're, we're trying to bring some solutions. And let me tell you something. A lot of folks out there listening, they just don't even know the real deal. Now, some folks know the real deal, what's going on now. But I can't, in my mind, Keenan, I can't even conceive in my mind how somebody can have 20 kids, 18 kids, 15 kids, 10 kids, 12 kids, 8 kids, I, no husband, no wife, no... I. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to change the subject, but let me put the question in, on the table because the elephant in the room is big and stinking right about now. What happened to folks using contraceptives and practicing some kind of uh, 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 not safe sex only, but, you know what I'm saying, prevention of these issues? What happened to that? You're absolutely right, Coach. This elephant is yeah, dropping big right. turds right about now. Y'all excuse me, but this, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, when the elephant, if you ever been to the zoo, you know, when the elephant go to the bathroom, he don't make no announcement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just dropped, bam. And I mean, you just dropped another one on us. Not that you dropped it, but society, we're just having a ball and consequences are flying everywhere. Serious. And, I'm just like. <laughs> I mean, Coach, the thing that the thing that we can do to get past some of this is this. I mean, I think you're right. You know, contraceptive is is a must, but you know, for a number of reasons, not just for you know for to prevent pregnancy, but to prevent from uh, STDs and STIs and stuff like that. But um, 
the main thing is this, Coach. You know, and I've said this on several shows in the past, men and women. It's, it's not only on us. It's not only on our women. It, it, men, we have to take onus for a lot of this too. You can't be a you can't be a man and have six or seven baby mamas. You know, but, you, know, but, you got. You, but, but that's where I want to stop you because, as you said in another show, this is the no, this is the new fashion. How do you how do you come to grips with somebody? Because I hear that. Women are saying this too. My wifey, my my and the guys are saying my wifey. They they are baby. Another n- n- term for baby mamas. Kenan, how do you get our listening audience past the fame of baby mamas? <laughs> I mean, and this and that's the thing, Coach. I mean, you know, everything is is about the flavor of the month. Baby mamas was just was hot. You know, just like just like a new fashion could be hot. This in the third now. Baby mamas, baby daddies could be can, can be classified as different. Like, so f- say for example, you're a mom, you got three kids, and you had your three kids with your husband. Well, mm-hmm. that's different. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a totally different topic, mm-hmm. a totally different situation than you know somebody out here who's had who's never been married mm-hmm. and has, who's had four and five, you know, three and four mm-hmm. men father their children. Mm-hmm. That's just that's something very different. Now. Again, if you were caught up when you were 16, 17, you know, that, that happens. It happens, to, it happens to the best of us. You might have been a young teenager and got caught up. Mm. You know, but the thing about it is this, and we have to take, you know, we have to always look within ourselves, Coach. You said this on, a, on the last several shows that we had. Mm-hmm. We have to look within ourselves and say, okay, you know what? I'm a mother or I'm a father, and there's no, mm-hmm. there makes no sense for me to have all these different baby mothers. So, you know, that means I'm doing something wrong. Mm. That means that I'm out here doing something wrong, and it's something that I need to check in within myself. Because mm. it's like you know, I mean, you know, don't get it wrong, coach. None of us are perfect. You know, I'm not preaching to anybody like I'm perfect and like I'm, I'm God Almighty because I'm not. But when you look at how the the whole situation of this affects our youth and affects our kids, and, and we all know what we do is duplicated in our youth and our kids, mm-hmm. you, you have to take onus of that. But that's just the point. I want to say for about 75 years, we ain't took no ownership. And we weren't this bad 50, maybe 70 years ago. Maybe I would say 60 years ago, 50 years ago. But that's just the point right there. That's the part, the point that pisses you off. That's the point that makes you as an activist, you're an activist out there, those that are listening. If you're a community worker, those of you that are listening, social workers, attorneys, teachers, so forth and so on. That's the part. No one is taking responsibility. Who's going to lead that? Who's going to lead that march? We got to march for make sure that we vote. OK, we understand the Supreme Court has taken away portions of that because we're not big enough and bad enough to stand up to the various governors and the various states. And so they, they were able to snatch that out of the hat. Uh, we got another issue going on with uh, the money situation where corporations can give unlimited. I mean, we got a number of issues that we can't do anything about. Uh, but 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 my 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 question is, what are we going to do about this? Who's going to lead this march? Who's going to make the anthem, you know, in hip hop culture, for example, you know, because we've had a show about that, you know, music that just leads us all over the place. But well, who's going to write that song? I mean, we're talking about love, but after you look at all the evidence that you're presenting in this court of radio, <laughs> it makes me wonder whether or not this case right here has already been tried. All parties are guilty only because no one is standing up to say anything. This is the silent monster that is killing us as brown folks, and it's just... It, and this is what makes you mad. This is what makes us do radio programs and go out and start youth programs. And you know what I'm saying? Try to make sure that we ourselves are, are not culpable in the same activities uh, to try to lead by example. But Keenan, who's going to lead this march? Talk about a million man march. Who's going to lead this one? For cultural well, folks to wake up and understand that, listen, we got, we got some patterns here that's, that's killing us, Keenan. And, and coach, you know, I, I think you're you're right. You know, I think you're absolutely right. And this, and the thing is, this too, coach. You know, so much to not. It's not so much. You know, I think you're right about who can lead and who, because uh, we we all know that not only do our kids follow, but like you just now mentioned, you put something on uh, BET or you, you allow one of these um, these reality TV show personalities to get to to start a trend, and the world is this this like a storm, mm-hmm. and everybody else is following it. So. 
Um, but with that, Coach, you know, we once again, we have to look within ourselves and ask that question like, and it's not it's not about being mean to people. It's not about, mm. but it's, it's about looking, you know, like, for example, what you said, you don't you don't understand, Coach, how a person can have that many children or, you know, well, what I don't understand is how that same man or woman can have that many kids, but the next person knows it and still continues to condone it, like, or, or allows that person, you know, it's like, as a woman, let me just use a woman, and women, I'm not picking on you. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, insult any women. But this is what I don't understand. If I know, if I know the character of a man, and I know this man has fathers, eight plus kids, six, seven plus kids, it's like, what do I need to be involved with you for? You might dress nice, you might be cute, you might have a, but it's like, you know, it's like, if you're a father, that many kids, and you're not with the, the mother of any of those kids, why in God's name am I being involved with you? Vice versa, same thing with the men. Like, you know, and, and I understand maybe the man's personality may be, well, it's it's maybe easy or it's a, it's a one-night stand, maybe it's quick or whatever the case may be. But that's what I mean, Coach Spot. We have to take onus and, and take pride in ourselves and say, you know what? No disrespect to you, sweetheart. No disrespect to you, my man. But I'm not interested because I know what whatever you're dealing with, I can't be involved in that because I don't want to be the next victim, so Lord to speak. Lord have mercy is all I can say. This, this, is, this is the perpetuation of everything that Willie Lynch letters told us would happen. Certain, certain folks have put certain things in place, the rewarding of, and no, no fun intended, no, no poking intended against African-American women, but they had rewarded in the early days and yet still African-American women having these babies out of wedlock, and now they're doubling back to make sure they can control the process with sterilization. Y'all don't want to get the coach, man. Don't definitely don't want to stir up Keenan. But when you think about this whole this whole scenario, I, I'm just asking the question before we go to break and freaking lose our freaking minds here. Who is going to sound the alarm, blow the freaking bugle, so that some of us can have a chance to recover? quickly and that's what this show is all about we love hearing from our listeners we want to thank you in advance because you're telling us what topics you want us to hear you're telling us what's bothering you about your community and this is what's going to take and more Keenan, i gotta go to break i'm about ready to bust you you've done it again if this was a football it would have to be rugby because the football is hot right now (laughs) <laughs> uh, we're going to go to break You're listening to the Kenny Lake Show Live and on demand on SIBN Radio Stand by You're listening to the sounds Of your lifestyle Improvement Station Hi, Jamaica Chapel, College Park, Georgia, in the house. You're listening to SIBN Radio. Turn Hi, this is Ted Balls calling from Richmond, Virginia, and you're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, SIBN Radio. Y'all turn it up now. Hi, this is VJ Washington calling from Atlanta, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, SIBN Radio. So turn it up. Hi, my name is Sonia Claiborne from East St. Louis, Illinois, by way of Corruptsville, Missouri. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station. S-I-B-N Radio. Turn it up. What's good? It's your boy Joe coming from Snellville, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, S-I-B-N Radio. Y'all turn it up. You're listening to the sounds of your Lifestyle Improvement Station, changing the way we live. S-I-B-N FM. Powered by Summit USA TV. This is SIBN Radio. Radio. And you have just tuned in to the Keenan Lake Show. I'm your host, Keenan Lake. I am a published author, book, My Daddy Taught Me That, a public speaker, and the president of a men's development youth program. The purpose of this show is to create awareness on topics that are dear to my heart, primarily absent fathers, male role models in the home, youth and young adults and children, families, and neglect and abuse. 
I not only want to shine a light on these topics and create awareness on these topics, I want to educate, inform, encourage, and motivate. So please join us on the Keenan Lake Show. For more information about the Keenan Lake Show, give us a call at 415-967-2346. And we thank you for listening to S-I-B-N Radio. Ustedes están escuchando SIBN, transmitido por Salet USA TV. Síganos en Twitter, at Salet USA TV, o visítenos en www.41596radio.com. All right, right, we're back here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I'm going to explode, implode. Ladies, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you while we're talking. 1-888-544-1254. Hopefully, we'll be able to get your calls in on tonight, uh, today, this morning, this evening, whenever you listening. But, man, Kenan, I mean, it's rough out here in the streets, bro. <laughs> Coach, you know, it's tough, man. And, um, you know, again, I'm glad you mentioned it. To any of the, of the listeners following, please uh, call in. We would love to know your thoughts on, um, you know, parents, you know, single parents. Uh, single parents and or both uh, two parent homes. Anybody who uh, is not taking care of their youth, have not taken care of their kids, should they be sterilized? Should that be something that, that uh, is even an option? We would love to hear your thoughts on that. And Keenan, don't so forget, Coach, don't forget they can call after the show and leave their thoughts, and we possibly would use it uh, in our production for the next show. So if you if you don't want to be live, but you want to leave your thoughts. You just d- simply dial 1-888-544-1254. Leave a 20-second message or 30 seconds uh, thereabouts, and uh, we might be able to use it in the show. Keenan. Okay. Coach, you know, um, this is uh, going to get a little bit off the topic, what I'm about to talk about real quick while we wait for some of our listeners to chime in. But I wanted to, um, I wanted to uh, read this, and this came, I, I got this, uh, this email on uh, December the 1st. And uh, the email talks about a Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania judge who was sentenced for 28 years, Coach, for selling kids to the prison system. What? So I'm going to read this. Yeah, I'm going to read this quick article real quick, Coach, while we wait for some of our, our listeners to call in. Right. And the reason that I'm reading this article is because we're talking about a system now, folks, where, you know, parents and, and women primarily had been, um, you know, sterilized without their, without their knowledge. Coach has mentioned to you guys about the, the system as far as um, – you know, being economic, be be uh, classism. You know, so we we've talked about this system, coach. And we've actually talked about the the power of privatizing prisons. But I want to I want to read this real quick. Mm-hmm. It says Mark, uh, his name is Cavalera Jr., age sixty one, a former judge of Pennsylvania, has been sentenced to nearly thirty years in prison for literally uh, selling young juveniles for cash. He was convicted for accepting money in exchange for incarcerating thousands of adults and children into the prison system owned by a developer who was paying him under the table. The kickbacks amounted to more than a million dollars. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court has overturned some 4,000 convictions issued by him between 2003 and 2008, claiming that he violated the, the constitutional rights of juveniles, including the right to legal counsel and the right to uh, intellectually enter a plea. Mm-hmm. Some of the juveniles he sentenced were as young as 10 years old. It says that he was, uh, Cavalera was convicted of 12 counts, including racketeering, money laundering, uh, mail fraud, and tax evasion. He was also ordered to repay uh, $1.2 million in, rest- in restitution. His Kids for Cash program has revealed that corruption is indeed within the prison system, mostly driven by growth in private prisons seeking profits by any means necessary. Absolutely incredible. I'm speechless. So, I'm, yeah. I'm speechless. And you know what's interesting? I want to say where were the parents, but I want to say greater still, where was the community? These are the things that we need to be marching about. These are the things that we need to be outraged about. These are the things we need to be blogging about. These are the things that we yep. need to be posting videos about. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you know, I've been accused of being too serious. Okay, so I, I'm guilty. But you see why now 
I take life a little serious when you listen to the Keenan Lake show and any other show on SIB and radio because serious, this is serious business. We got to, what kind of legacy are we going to pass on if, if your child's story is that I was sold? I mean, that's just Keenan. You too good. You, 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 you too sharp. We had to turn this into a television show because the audio is going to drive me crazy. You got to be able to see the person deliver this kind of mail. Cause I mean, this is crazy. This is, this is ludicrous. And where's the communities at? Exactly. You know, and Coach, you know, this is what I try to teach my young men all the time. At, at the, my daddy taught me that men's development youth program is that it's not so much about it's not so much about right and wrong because we all know right and wrong. But it's about being able to make those healthy decisions because if you don't, and parents, and I, and I hope you, the parents out there can listen to me too. If we don't educate our youth and we don't train them, we don't teach them, we don't spend time with them. Okay, instead of just you know, sending them to school for, you know, the six, seven hours they're in school, and, and that's it. You know, we have to take time with our youth. We have to teach our youth. We have to train our youth. Because I'm telling you, if we don't, there is a system that is waiting to make money off of them, and it's called the penal prison system. They they are taking our, in our young folks, black, white, young, it doesn't matter what color you are. They're, they're taking in our young men and women by the by the droves to, to, to make money off of them. And that's all it is. It's a, it's a business. Prison, the prison system is a business, and if they can get, the more they can get in there, the more money they can make, which which then jacks up everything. I mean, you look at it, fifteen dollars to make a phone call if you're in the prison system. So all of the all of the uh, the rates as far as um the, the, the excuse me the um cell phone companies, T-Mobile, Sprint, you know they they're competing to get into these prisons because they know they can make money. The same thing with everything, you know, cheap labor. So it's a business, coach. And somebody's going to somebody's gonna profit off the backs of our youth. Well, let's go back to the basics real quick. You know, DJ, y'all bring me up something because I'm about ready to explode here. You know, let's go back to the basics. The bottom line, when you, when you have sexual relations without a condom, without protection, without planning, and you wind up and find out that you're pregnant, the whole purpose of having a child is to bring that human being into the world for what you said, Keenan, I wrote it down, even though I would remember it, but I'm so stirred up that I wanted to write it down. To take time with the child. You think you're not going to be judged by somebody upstairs for just leaving the child to raise itself? Are you kidding me? Number two, to train the child, to show the child the how. Do you think that you're going to be able to get off scot-free without any consequences from anywhere. It's just going to be a free ride to go to the club and just make all the money you can drive your Lexus while your kids ain't trained. And then the third one, to help the child understand the power of choice. This is what it means to parent. It hits the married folks. It hits the single folks. It hits black folks, white folks. It don't even matter. Parenting is colorless, raceless. I know that's not a word. I just made it up. Classless. Parenting is a responsibility. And if you're big enough to pull your pants or panties down, sorry, Ken, I had to go in on it like that, then you ought to be able to back up and say, you know what? If I have a child, I'm going to man up, I'm a woman up, and if I can't do it, I'm going to call the Keenan Lake Show. I'm going to call a, I'm gonna call a, you know, a friend. I'm going to call... I want to say the pastor, but some of them can't be trusted. But I don't know. You might want to call somebody else rather than the pastor because I'm just saying. Stories that I'm getting right now about what's going on in some of these churches is far out there. You see what I'm saying? Wow. But we got to remember the three words that you said, the most powerful words of the entire show. Timing, training, choosing. TTC, if you take nothing else away from this show, the Keenan Lake Show, Keenan said it so very well. You have to take time with children. They are so soft and mobile. I know they play like they hard. Little thugs running around with their pants down and all that. That's just an act. They want guidance. They want to know, how. well, how do I face up to the peer pressure? You know, everybody else got their pants down. And if I pull mine up, I'm going to look like the eyeball in the room. Right, Kenan? I mean, how do yeah, Kenan, let right, me right, ask coach. you, how do you teach your boys choice? How do you do it? Well, well Coach, first of all, you're, you're, you're 100% right. You know, our youth. Our youth, they, you know, they, they have the swag, they have the, the, the tradition of uh, being cool and this and the third. 
But the the thing that you said that was most true, Coach, is that they want to be taught. Mm -hmm. They want to be, be, so to speak, coached. Mm -hmm. They they want us adults to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. And when we don't, when we leave them to their demise, that's when things happen. Mm -hmm. So the thing is this. Now, don't get it twisted. They will challenge you. Kids are going to challenge you left and right. Mm -hmm. But when you can resist those challenges and let them know that, you know, this is what it's going to be. And, folks, let me say this. Parents, to all my parents out there, it's not about being mean to your kids. It's not about, you know, it's not about, you know, being uh, just horrible parents to your kids. But it is about being parents and not being your, your children's friends. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be their friends, but you can still be their parents and not be afraid to make those tough decisions. If they don't like you, you know, they don't like you. But they'll, they'll, they don't like you for the moment. Mm -hmm. But I promise you they'll appreciate you a lot more in the long run when you make those tough decisions. You tell them no. Mm -hmm. For example... I had a kid, I got, had a kid coach, 13 years old, okay, in my program, mm -hmm. 13 years old, and this is, this is the things that I'm talking about, folks, 13 years old, went to a party, his curfew was at 11 o'clock, he didn't come home until 10 o'clock the next morning, 13 years old. Mm. The mother said she put him on punishment, the following weekend, the kid was back out at the mall doing everything he wanted to do, so what kind of, what kind of learning experience was there for this kid, I mean... You know, he's on punishment for a month. He's doing this, but, you know, it's like, well, what did he really learn? He learned that he could stay out until 10 o'clock in the morning, okay? Mm -hmm. 13 years old, 10 o'clock in the morning, be on punishment for a day or two, and then he's back, he's back at it again. So mm -hmm. consequences are real for these kids, okay? And if there's no consequences involved, if there's nothing that can really get their attention as far as what you did is wrong and this is how it's going to be addressed, mm -hmm. you can't expect any change to be done. Mm. You know what's really funny? There's some parent out there that's sitting there and saying, I got a great kid, but why did my kid have to die? He was doing good in school. He was doing well uh, in the community. I, you know, when I look at the news, it, it, it strikes me as odd that the good kids be the ones, excuse my Ebonics, that get shot dead with the stray bullets, ran over with the drunk driver, and then parents are sitting there wondering, like, dude, Keenan, Marcus, my kid was a great kid. My kid was a, a good student. My kid was a church attending, Bible believing kid, whatever. My kid was a great athlete. Why did my kid have to die? This is the this is the this is the paradox. And this is why we have said in our shows, you got to have some kind of spiritual foundation because the paradox of life will strap your mind down and stump your mind if you ain't careful. The paradoxes of life, the crossroads. Why does good things happen to why does good thing bad things happen to good kids? And then the bad kids, I don't like to use that phrase, but for the lack of the illustration I'm trying to trying to illustrate here, show you, and they just skate by. And then there's a mother out there, Keenan, that says, you know what? I don't know what to do with mine. Well, dear, when you come into a crossroads, Keenan, back me up and tell me if I'm right or wrong. If you come into a crossroads where you've done all that you can and can all that you done done and you still ain't seeing no results, that's when you got to bend the knee, bro. <laughs> I'm just sorry. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right, Coach. And, you know, I'm glad you said that, too. For all my parents out there, you know, Coach made a valid point. Don't be afraid to praise your children. You know, if, if, the thing is, too, we get caught up in, um, you know, this is what my kids should do, and, you know, I, I'm the parent. I give, I provide a roof over my kid's head. I give, you know, our kids deserve to be praised for primarily when they're doing good things. You know, if you have a good child at home, you know, praise your child. Be, be blessed. Be grateful that, you do have a child that you that, that you have because trust me when I tell you I see it every day out in these streets with these kids and there's so many of these youth lost there's so many of us, us adults that are lost and so you wonder why the youth are in the state that they're in too so to speak now don't get it twisted either um, we have a lot of youth doing a lot of positive productive things doing a lot of great things so I commend my youth for that I commend my parents for doing their good things because we have a lot of parents who are taking care of their business and, and raising some good kids show sure you right <clears throat> if we have any listeners out there, I think I, I think I had one listener who said they wanted to call in. Um, I think that extension was eighty five again. Was that right, Coach? Right, one eight 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 one eight 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 five four four one two five four extension eighty five. Because we don't have much time, so if you want to call in, you can call in now. And Keenan, you are absolutely right. 
let's let's first take our hats off and applaud all the parents who are grinding inside the home and outside the home making it happen not using excuses home when they could be in the club making sure little johnny boy little sally is doing what they supposed to do and feeling the love and support as they pursue education and so forth and so on. Keenan, you are absolutely right. And you know what? We don't spend enough time telling you that are doing a great job, great job. And we apologize for that. The news don't give y'all enough credit. And that might be why violence and bad things get more press because it's better ratings. But on the Keenan right. Lake Show, we might have to have a segment. Let's pause for the things that are going great for X, Y, and Z. We might have to have a section called that, Keenan. But if you want to make a phone call, call into the show right now, 1-888-544-1254. Keenan, man, I just want to encourage some parent out there, man. Thank you for holding it down. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for taking little Johnny, man, to school, man, even though you're running late for work, man. Thank you so much to that daddy who, who don't earn a lot of money, man, but you you forking up some child support, man. You're trying to make something happen. Can I say thank you to him, King? <laughs> you sure can, Coach. And I actually second that. Thank you, folks, to all my parents, to all my youth, to all my young adults out there who are doing some great things out there. Keep it up because this is what we need to inspire change. We need, we need more folks to like you all to inspire change to create change and to make that to make that positive and possible so others can say you know what if they can do it i can do it too That's coach real quick mind. i want to talk about um you know if i call this call in that'll be great but um i want to talk about a couple things um to all of the listeners who are listening in the Asheville area um the surrounding areas if you i, I need some help folks so and what i need help with is this um primarily to all of our males who are listening mm-hmm. i have a men's development program the men's development program is just that. It's men. I have young men ages 12 through 19. Mm-hmm. One of the bases, one of the, one of the crooks of my program is being able to have positive males work with these young men. And, and that phrase, iron sharp as iron, if they can see positivity, they can do positivity. Right. I say it in my shows all the time. You know, kids are, are kids, you know, we as people, we're all duplicate. We duplicate what we see. We duplicate what we know. We kind of regurgitate that. So we can... If we can pump as much positivity into these young males as we possibly can, then hopefully they can duplicate that in their walk in their life as well. So if I have any men who are interested in, 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 in being a, a support, um, you know, please let me know. Um, Coach, I just got a text message that said the, uh, the, vo- uh, the, show, the line went to voice message. It said they left a message, but it's all good. All right, but tell them, hey, um, text them back and tell them to call. We'll add them to the conference, 678 uh, 830 uh, If you can't get through to the line, uh, t- text that number on out so we can go ahead and get this call. We, w- we need to hear from you guys on tonight. What, what was that again, Coach? 678 uh, 630 Tell them to call okay. that line right now because we, if you want to be an intern on, on the Keenan Lake show, by all means, let us know also because we need folks to work the social media boards. We need folks to answer the phone calls here in the studio. We need all kinds of help. So if you want to be an intern on and at the Keenan Lake show on SIBN Radio, whatever you do, let us know. Again, that's one 544 1254 but that extension would be 101, extension 101. Okay. But tell them to call so coach again. Hold on, they call yeah. it, they call they call it in now. Bye bye. Okay. All right, you're on the Keenan Lake show live and on the man. What's your name? And where you calling from? Roseanne from Baltimore. Roseanne is in the house, folks. Roseanne, how Rosie, are you Rosie, doing? Rosie. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to call in and say excellent job um what you guys are doing on this show. I mean I really think what it's going to take is awareness and education, and that's what that's what you're doing is putting it out there. Excellent topic. You're putting it out there to the people, and it's really going to take somebody hearing and being outraged by this information. Like you said, Coach, being heated and being, like, really appalled, you know, at, at what we're hearing. So excellent job. The more people hear, the more we can get up and get out and do something. 
Real quick, what do you uh, think about the sterilization that we were talking about early? Women being sterilized without their knowledge, and in, in California's case, they're sterilized. I want to say legally. Yeah, I think that is absolutely uh, ridiculous. It's just another um, another way to to take away people's rights. I think it should not absolutely should not happen. I don't care if you have fifty kids. I don't think you should be sterilized without your knowledge. Um, because, you know, that's just not right. When we go to the hospital or wherever we go to first care or whatever, we're expecting those people to uh, treat us as if we were, you know, them, as if we were them, you know, as if we were, we're not doctors. So we don't know what's going on. It's basically what I'm trying to say. We don't, we're not doctors. We're not nurses. So for you to perform some procedure of something that someone has no knowledge of, it's just absolutely crazy. I don't, um, you know, think that's that's fair at all. Regardless of, like I said, all these you know, women or men having kids and not taking care of them, that's a whole a separate issue that that mm-hmm. needs to be dealt with. That's but a good. That's a good point. Well said. Good point. That was well said, Rosie. That yeah. was well said. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but I mean, that, that is just, uh, I think that you're absolutely right. That is just, in, it's, it's an outrage. So what you're saying is like once you open Pandora's box, it's going to be hard to close. And if we say it's okay to legal, it's okay to sterilize somebody that has a bunch of kids, once we say it's okay, it's going to be hard to say, no, you can't later on. Is that what you're saying? I believe that's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be that and a whole lot more. I mean, you're going to owe people. Now, who, who knows if we'll ever get, you know, paid. We're still waiting on our, you know, retribution as uh, African Americans. But you're going to owe people money. You know, when people find out what you have done without their knowledge, I mean, that's just mm-hmm. millions and millions, billions of dollars in lawsuits wouldn't happen. And I'm sure it's being done, like you mentioned, to the teenagers because they really don't have any knowledge of what's going on. I mean, sometimes as adults, we just sign things without reading the whole, you know, thing. And I don't know if they're they're reading something and then signing it and not knowing what it means, or they're really taking advantage and just doing it without any knowledge. Um, of course, the latter would be worse, but um, yeah, I just think it's just like you said, it's just a, a big old accident and lawsuit waiting to happen. And it's not fair, you know, and that's not the solution. The solution is to, to do exactly what you're doing, Keenan, is to get role models it's really going to take education because I think the more people know about what's going on and about what options they have, we really don't know what options and what benefits we have. And the more you put it out there, you know, the more people are going to, you know, wise up and say, okay, I don't have to live, you know, such a trifling life. <laughs> That's well said. Thank you so much, Rosie. I'm glad you came on the show. That's what's sure. up, man. Keep Thank up you so work. much. Baltimore is in the house, baby. Happy holidays to you. (laughs) Thank you so much, and I appreciate you calling in. All right, bye-bye. All right, Ken, we're going to take our last commercial break, come back and give them the final word of the day so that you'll be able to encourage them to continue to listening. Stand by. I'll be the church, let you be the pastor And what I want, man, you know I'm a ask you Throw a blessing like a picture, man, I'll be the catcher You keep it popping like a firecracker Used to be a thug, but you changed the stature Just take your shrimp from cheese and crackers Life changed every time I read a chapter You got me on lockdown and I don't want to pay the bill Make me feel so good inside, make me want to yell Got a private by mine and you got me on a dead. Am I trusting you? Cause I know you will never fail. You're listening to the sounds of SIBNFM Radio. The weekday grind and the weekend drive. Turn it up. Hey, Kenan, we're going to wrap things up, man. Give us your final thoughts. 30 seconds. Well, Coach, you know. First of all, I want to give a special thanks and shout out to Rosie Holmes. That's my that's my my home girl. We uh we go way back, and she comes from a very very talented family. She has a a brother, an actor, and she's a singer. She she actually is a gospel rapper as well. She's the mother of two beautiful children. I mean, I really I really I'm thankful for she called in. So special shout out to Rosie, y'all. Um, Coach. Um, again, you know, folks. Me and Coach talk about this all the time. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. If you have any questions, 
after the show, please Facebook me, please tweet me, please inbox me, whatever you need to do. Uh, you can actually text me, call me, area code 828-582-2261. Coach, before we, before we shut the doors, I want to let everybody know about the comedy show happening on January 18th. That's right here in Asheville, North Carolina. It's called Funny R Us. We're going to have a, com a comic, Tyler Craig, is going to be here. Keenan Lake, My Daddy Taught Me That. Uh, Joe Green with KJG Entertainment. We're actually uh, putting this together to bring awareness to the program, but also to have some things for you folks to do here in the Asheville area. So we, we greatly appreciate your support. Come out and support us. Yes, SIBN is going to be there live and on demand. You know what I'm saying? Broadcasting on the radio, trying to get a little bit of footage there on video and so forth and so on. But listen, we need your support. Go to www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com because you can make the difference. And let me tell you something else. If you ever want to know how folks are helped along in this country, poor folks give more than rich folks would ever give. I need some help right there. And so if you want to make a difference, if you're in a twix, if you're on a crossroads, if you're in a, between a rock and a hard place and, you, and your kids is acting up because we all been there, your baby and them kids is acting up, hey, sow a seed for the need. I need some help. And sow a seed into a ground that you know is going to reap some fruit and make the difference in the kids' lives, not only in your household, household next to yours, but the kids that Keenan is working with on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. Keenan, great show. Once again, you are arsonists. You start fires and you sit and you watch them burn. <laughs> 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 it's been real, man. It's been real, man. It's, it's really been real, man. A lot of fun, man. And a lot of serious topics, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until the next time, don't forget, follow him on Twitter. Give that Twitter one more time. Facebook one more time, Kenan, as we head toward the door. Twitter one more time is the KL Show. Facebook, uh, the, uh, the Keenan Lake Show on SIVN Radio. We also have uh, My Daddy Taught Me That Facebook. And then if you can't remember those two, Keenan Lake. I have my own personal Facebook. All right, Love you folks again. Thank you very much for tuning in to the, uh, another edition of the Keenan Lake Show. All right, Keenan, stand by. Thank you for joining us today for the Keenan Lake Show. We know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828-582-2261. Until next time, you've been listening to The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Radio.